So Huawei reached out and uh, asked me if I would do a video on the new MateBook 13 laptop that they just announced at CES. I am already a huge fan of the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Um, you can check a video I did on the other MateBook X below. It's a great laptop. For the money, it's insane. So I was like, sure, why not? So for this video, I'm gonna just basically do a day in life. I'm gonna use this laptop exactly as I would on any normal day to do work and all the other stuff and just kind of see how it does throughout all of those tasks. Also, what I'm gonna do is from now until whenever it dies, I'm gonna be checking in on the battery after kind of each activity. We can see overall in a real world scenario, how long does it last doing these things? So first up, as is usual for me on a Sunday afternoon, let's go get some coffee. Made it to a local cafe, um, my normal Sunday afternoon. I'm gonna work here for a bit. Uh, so I've been here for maybe 30 minutes. It's 1.18, I got here maybe 12.45, and the laptop right now is at 95%. Again, I'm gonna test the battery throughout the entire day. Um, but I'm gonna sit here and do some typing and get familiar with the keyboard and the trackpad, I guess, uh, while I write some scripts and some articles as I usually do on a Sunday afternoon. Been sitting here for about two hours writing, as I said, and it's 2.45 and I'm at 76%. I have got a chance to use the keyboard a lot and obviously also the trackpad while writing and surfing the internet and doing my normal thing. Um, I have to say that the keyboard is really nice. I like that it's clicky, it's backlit, as most are, but this one's pretty bright. I'm in a coffee shop, there's sun coming in through the window, and it, I mean, you can see it, it's good. Otherwise, the trackpad, I'm really happy, is a precision trackpad. If you don't know what that is, it's where Microsoft and Windows internally handle the drivers for the trackpad as opposed to the manufacturers, which is how it used to be. And it feels good. It's probably one of the better trackpads that I've used. Um, and now we're going to head back to my office. Yes, to my office on a Sunday. It's a normal Sunday for me. And we're going to maybe edit some video and see if this thing can handle that. here at the WeWork and uh, I'm gonna try to do some light video editing on this thing. Now, keep in mind this is not a gaming laptop, it is not a video editing laptop, it's none of those things, so I don't really expect it to do well, but I wanted to test it out because this is something I would normally do in my day and just see if it can handle it at least a little bit. Okay, unexpectedly, it actually did pretty well. It was able to scrub through footage uh, and render footage at a normal pace for me. I did turn everything down to 1 8 in the previews because it's 4K footage. I do that anyway though on my normal editing laptop and it seemed to handle it just fine. It did though run into a little bit of issues when I started taking that 4K footage and trying to make time lapses out of it. Handled color correction no problem and some very basic titles, no like 3D animations, I didn't try any of that but it did have a little bit of an issue with the time lapse. But again, this is not an editing laptop. The fact that I can even do that, and based on that price, is kind of impressive. <laughs> okay, so after editing like that, I had to turn it all the way up to full performance, as opposed to the better battery that it's been on for the rest of the day. And oh, oh it, it, it killed the battery a bit. We're now at, after two hours of just kind of messing around in Premiere, 25%. Now that's normal for most laptops. As soon as you start doing something that is more graphic intense and it activates that discrete graphics card, like the one that this has in here, which is an MX150 two gig card, you start to lose battery life. So, fine. Now I'm gonna try and let's say watch a TV show or something on Netflix and see how it does there because I'm curious about the speakers. Now the speakers in here are actually located under the laptop. So let's see what that sounds like. The whole party is full of college kids like myself. But then there's this one older man as if he appeared out of nowhere. So the kid steps closer and his jaw drops. Was it? It was Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. 
I, I don't know, I can't really tell that they're under there, unless I get really close. If you put your ear to it, you can tell, but from the distance that you would be actually watching something, it sounds great to me. Okay, it's seven o'clock and it's finally died. Now, uh, one of the features I wanna test really quick is the fact that they said that this has a fast charger, which can give you about two hours, two and a half hours from just 15 minutes of charge. So, 15 minutes starts now. Fifty minutes is up. Let's see how much battery it has. And actually this brings up another feature that I think is kind of cool. It doesn't have Windows Hello as far as the IR cameras are concerned, like the facial recognition, which I like. It has a fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello, which I actually think is better because it's faster. Sometimes Windows Hello, the facial thing doesn't recognize you all the time. Usually it's great, but there's once in a while that it doesn't. There's this, and easy. Now, battery life, we are at 26%. Okay, that's a day, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So, I, I did a little math. It turns out that from 12.45 to 2.45, those two hours I was in the coffee shop, we went from 100% to about 76. At that rate, you could get about eight hours of battery life if you're just surfing the web, writing, etc., which is pretty awesome. Then, while editing, we went from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30, another two hours. That went from 70 to 25%. But again, this is not an editing laptop. That's kind of expected. Any type of laptop that you can use some discrete graphics, it's gonna drain power a lot faster when you're editing. Then, watching a movie, we went from 5.30 to 7 p.m. from 25% to zero. Now, if you extrapolate that out, that means that we lost 25% in an hour and a half. That ends up being about six hours of battery life when playing a video. So there you go. I mean, battery life is good. I like the build. Um, it feels a little more premium than other laptops at this price point. The keys are nice. The trackpad works pretty well. The speakers, I was surprised, don't sound muffled, which I thought they might have because they're underneath. They sound fine so long as you're at a normal distance. The editing experience wasn't bad at all. I mean, that time lapse thing, I could have just like let it render and then it would have been fine. The fact that you could do basic video editing on here, even in my 4K footage that I use is, is pretty impressive. Now, the most impressive thing about this laptop, I have to say, is the price. And I've been mentioning this the whole time, but the price of this laptop is at this configuration, 512 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM, the MX150 two gig card at the higher wattage than the other two gig that's floating around, i7 processors, etc. We're looking at $1,300, which is nothing compared to a lot of other Ultrabooks, which is what I would probably call this, out there. That's a really good deal. You can also get the i5 model for a thousand. I'd probably step it up to this model because still, again, at 1300 bucks, that's pretty incredible. There anyway, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments below about this laptop, about this video, etc. Always love hearing from you guys. Now, if you want to check out this laptop, click the link below uh, to the cheapest place that I could find it and also has more info on it as well. If you guys like this video, thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, check out the rest of the channel. Subscribe if you like what you see there. And ding the bell next door, subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.